Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. So as you can tell by the clickbaity uh, thumbnail that I'm sure I put on this video, I got a new EV. And uh, well, are you ready for the unveiling? So as you can see, my new EV is actually a Ryobi lawn tractor. And <laughs> in many ways, like this is a bit of a joke, but it's not because I've been wanting to replace our gas powered lawn tractor for a long time. Now it broke down years ago and we've sort of been doing without push mowers, that sort of thing, uh, weed eaters. You're gonna need those around edges of buildings, things like that anyway. So uh, it's not really gonna replace the weed whacker, but this is going to be a huge value add on our property. For those of you paying attention in California, right? We've had, uh, well, I, it's not even a record rainfall year. It's an average rainfall year, um, but it's coming off of a three year drought. So now we're having normal grass growth again, which we didn't really have before. And this is just two, two and a half acres, trying to cut fire breaks, things like that. Uh, this is gonna be crucial. And then for me, you know, I wanted to maybe address because this is a, an expensive lawnmower. And part of what you're paying for is the fact that it's electric. It's still sort of a novelty. Um, and it is more expensive for the equivalent gas powered mower. But what I will say is for the equivalent gas powered mower, you're gonna be paying less money, but you're gonna be getting a lot less in terms of just overall power, in terms of reliability. Gas lawn mowers are a real problem. And I think this is something that I think a lot of people who are electric vehicle advocates or people pushing to electrify and move away from fossil fuels for personal use. More of that em emphasis I think needs to go on yard tools, lawn tools, small things of that nature because that's where you can get them in the most hands the soonest and in terms of outside of carbon, right, in terms of carbon emissions, if you're actually really caring about things like criterion pollutants, which is what electric vehicles help with the most, uh, these do the best job of that. I've heard people point out that you release less pollutants from a Toyota Camry driving to Las Vegas from Los Angeles than you do on an average lawnmower, gas-powered lawnmower. And it makes sense just because of how dirty these run. If you've run two cycle weed eaters before, you're mixing oil and gas, you're having to run the throttle, it's just a pain. And then one of the reasons we got rid of our gas powered lawn tractor is it kept breaking down just over and over again. Maybe the condenser went out, the coil went out, whatever, belts go out, all sorts of things. Some of those are wear items that can go out in this as well but not as frequently um, and this is going to be just as easy to repair and so i kind of wanted to maybe address a couple of the shortcomings and explain why for me they aren't really uh, i know a lot of people talk about oh well this is only a 30 inch deck and i probably would have gotten a 38 inch deck if it had been available it literally wasn't um, but the 30 inch deck isn't that big of a deal because we're not maintaining lawns here. So a lot of people I think who look at these are looking to maintain actually managed lawns, right? Like you're at a golf course or something of that nature. We don't do that here. Uh, we maybe cut the grass twice a year. And if we have a lot of rain or late season rain, we might have to do it two or three you know, an additional three or four times. Uh, but normally we're only going to cut the lawn twice, basically. And it's going to be right around the same time. We're going to do one pass when it's high after the grass sort of has a chance to go to seed. We have a lot of native grasses. We have a lot of wildflowers. We want to let those grow, mature, go to seed. And then you have a narrow window where you want to cut it before it becomes a fire hazard, right? So maybe one pass when it's tall, if it's still sort of green and still growing a little bit, maybe wait 
otherwise at most a week later go back and just mow it down almost to the ground right just very very short because what you're doing is you're creating a fire break around your property and then the rest of the fields can be left fallow for grazing animals wildlife things of that nature so really you're sort of doing zoning if you want to look at it from like a permaculture uh, standpoint so that then begs the question of well if you only need it once a year or twice a year why even bother because really um, ninety percent of the duty cycle for this isn't going to be mowing. Uh, some members of the family have some mobility issues, so this is going to help them get around the property. Like I said, two and a half acres and not necessarily even terrain, things like that. This is going to be a really uh, great tool for helping them get around the property. And then it has a tow hitch, so. You don't want to have people t pulling around 600 pound gorilla carts. Uh, there's no reason for that, right? So you can just hook it up and let them tow their gorilla cart around, get to where they want to get on the property. And you know, it just it's gonna be a super helpful in that regard. And I'll probably use it that way too. Uh, if I'm feeling particularly lazy or there's just something cumbersome or whatever that I don't want to move around. So. And in, in that use case, if that's 90% of the use case, having a narrower deck actually helps out a lot because it lets you maneuver a little bit easier. It's, it doesn't get in the way as much. Um, and then the other aspect, I think a big criticism of these Ryobis in particular is that they have lead acid batteries. Now, I'm all for lithium batteries, right? But I'm also someone who's not tied to a particular chemistry or technology it's why i don't shun things like hydrogen knowing full well that hydrogen can be you know created cleanly and renewably so why would you shun that right as in as an energy storage technique and method uh, and lead acid has its place now I don't know that it's ideal for this, but in terms of cost cutting, it definitely is, right? And then if you're talking about things where it's not mobile and you don't need a high amount of volumetric and gravimetric energy density, lead is more recyclable than lithium. It's cheaper than lithium. The production capacities are already there. And we have a lot of lead sitting around that we don't really want to do other stuff with. So having it in sealed batteries, that's not a big deal. Now, the other reason why it's not a big deal for me is these have already been, we've seen a number of people converting these to lithium, and I probably will as well when these 12 volt batteries go out and then I take them in to be recycled. I'll probably replace this with a lithium uh, LFP battery chemistry. Now, these are 50 amp hours, so some people say it's somewhere between a quarter and a half an acre that this will cut in a single charge. That's fine. Like I said, I'm mostly cutting fire breaks. Um, and then the replacement batteries, if I go with LFP, the thing to remember is that while you can only use about 50% of the rated capacity in amp hours on a lead acid battery, you can use... 100% of the rated amp hours on an LFP battery. And so even though these are 50 amp hours, if I replaced them with 50 amp hour LFP, well, I would have literally double the life for driving around, mowing, that sort of thing. And then of course, the other aspect of that is I would also reduce the weight. Now I was actually impressed with this when it came in, it came in a little metal cart, delivery cart. It wasn't actually as heavy as I thought it would be. I could actually pick it up from the rear end with not out a, a huge amount of, of strain, right? Like it's a deadlift, but it's still heavy, right? Probably 400 to 450 pounds for this entire uh, lawn tractor, but about half of that weight is more than likely in the lead acid batteries. And if you're replacing that with 50 to 100 pounds of LFP batteries. Now you have an extremely lightweight lawn tractor that's going to be, you know, easy to move around, easy to accelerate. Um, so that's probably where I'm going with it. But we'll see how long, and I'll report back on this over time, how long these lead acid batteries actually last. And if I do replace them with LFP, what that process is. Um, 
but I mean, that's the big reason I got this. I started doing research about buying an old gas powered uh, lawn tractor that had broken down and converting it to electric. And I'm already elbows deep in my Ford Ranger electric project, trying to rebuild and restore those. I don't need another project. I just need something that I can use to keep the grass cut down, to keep the fire breaks. Like I said, for mobility issues and things of that nature. So this is gonna perfectly suit that need, I think, but I'll report back as it is. It's still a little too early to cut this. Like I said, we don't wanna be cutting uh, grass that hasn't gone to seed yet, wildflowers that are still growing, the bees, we're, we're still having temperatures in the 30s to, at night. So giving a chance for the bees to come out um, and, and the bugs and everything to, to, you know, you want the whole life cycle. So we're not going to disturb this too much, but we do have a couple of tall grass patches where some of our compost bins used to be. So I'm going to test this out a little bit there, put it in the highest setting, maybe do a quick run and then lower it maybe to cut a little bit lower. Uh, but not, not too much. This isn't any sort of a stress test. I might do some of those things later, a towing <laughs> test, if you will. But uh, for now, I'm just going to uh, run it through some tall grass, see how it goes. Um, you know, one of the things I guess I forgot to mention about this, this does come with a 48 volt battery and it comes with a 48 volt charger that plugs into a, a 120 volt outlet so i actually haven't plugged it in or even charged it yet this is still the original charge that came from factory um so yeah let's just run it through that grass a little bit and then maybe i'll give some closing thoughts <laughs> So there you have it. Um, like I said, that was just the highest setting, just one pass to cut the grass down a little bit. Um, I think it did well. Again, I don't know what the capacity will be over time, how, how long it would be able to sustain that kind of effort for, but um, certainly easier than a push mower, certainly a lot quieter. Uh, I know some people are gonna tell me you still need hearing protection and eye protection. Um, so don't consider this a safety channel. Um, and then, you know, that's one of the other things that I do have to be aware of as I'm sort of testing this out is in terms of driving over hills, things of that nature, uh, the turning radius. So again, we don't have a lot of flat ground necessarily. Uh, and then of course, as I lower the settings, you always have to worry about things like rocks. And one of the reasons that we have to cut when we do is because it's very easy to start a fire once it gets drier just by hitting rocks when you're uh, when you're mowing so all of these things are things that we have to kind of be aware of uh, where we are in northern california uh, but like i said in terms of its mowing capabilities in terms of just mobility things of that nature so far so good it's exactly what i expected so uh, i'd love to hear what you uh what you think have you gotten one of these mowers before would you get a lead acid version or if you could would you get a lithium instead um, does this type of mower fit your need or would you actually need one of the larger deck zero turn that sort of thing anyway if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe it really helps out the channel and uh Let's get to mowing.